Hello. <laughs> um, I just wanted to read something from the book, The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis, if I'm saying his name right. Something that is very encouraging for mothers, and you don't even have to watch me. I know that as mom, I watch a lot of YouTube videos as I am uh, <laughs> folding laundry or doing the dishes, so I like to listen to a lot of things that I find really interesting. And so I found this that I read today in The Imitation of Christ very encouraging to me as a mother, and especially a mother of many littles. I don't have, my oldest is eight, so I know <laughs> eight and under, um, it's just busy and um, you don't have a lot of help. And um, so sometimes it just seems like you, you never get a rest and you never get a break. Um, so I want to read this. It's, it's, it's really encouraging. Um, it's called Examples of the Holy Fathers. Look upon the lively examples of the Holy Fathers, in whom true perfection and religion were most shining, and thou wilt see how little and almost nothing that is which we do. Alas, what is our life if compared to theirs? The saints and friends of Christ serve the Lord in hunger and thirst, and cold and nakedness, and labor and weariness, and watchings and fastings, and prayers and holy meditations, and persecutions and many reproaches. Hebrews eleven thirty seven. Ah, how many and how grievous tribulations have the apostles, martyrs, confessors, virgins, and all the rest undergone who have been willing to follow Christ's footsteps, for they hated their lives in this world, that they might possess them for eternity. John twelve twenty five. Oh, how strict and mortified a life did the Holy Fathers lead in the desert. What long and grievous temptations did they endure. How often were they molested by the enemy. What frequent and fervent prayers did they offer to God. What rigorous abstinence did they go through. What great zeal and fervor had they for their spiritual progress? How strong a war did they wage for overcoming vice? How pure and upright was their intention to God? They labored all the day, and in the night they gave themselves to prayer. Though even whilst they were at work, they ceased not from mental prayer. They spent all their time profitably. Every hour seemed short which they spent with God, and through the great sweetness of divine contemplation they forgot even the necessity of their bodily refreshment. They renounced all riches, dignities, honors, friends, and kindred. They desired to have nothing of this world. They scarcely allowed themselves the necessaries of life, the serving the body, even a necessity, was irksome to them. They were poor, therefore, as to earthly things, but very rich in grace and virtue. Outwardly they were in want, but inwardly they were refreshed with divine graces and consolations. They were strangers to the world, but near and familiar friends to God. They seemed to themselves as nothing, and were despised by this world, but in the eyes of God they were very precious and beloved. They stood in true humility, they lived in simple obedience, they walked in charity and patience, and therefore they daily advanced in spirit and obtained great favor with God. They were given as an example for all religious and ought more to excite us to make good progress than the number of the lukewarm to grow slack. Oh, how great was the fervor of all religious in the beginning of their holy institution. Oh, how great was their devotion and prayer how great their zeal for virtue! What great discipline was in force among them! What great reverence and obedience in all flourished under the rule of a superior! The footsteps remaining still bear witness that they were truly perfect and holy men who, waging war so stoutly, trod the world under their feet. Now he is thought great, who is not a transgressor, and who can with patience endure what he hath undertaken. Ah, the lukewarmness and negligence of our state, that we so quickly fall away from our former fervor, and are now even weary of living through sloth and tepidity. Would, would to God that advancement in virtues was not wholly asleep in thee, who hast so often seen many examples of the devout. 
you know, and that will speak different things to different people in the state of life that they are in. Um, but for me, I just think of the things that we give up and the things that we lose as mothers, sleep, time, energy, and, um, and if we focus so much on what we want, um, that's when we lose our joy and that's when we lose, um, our zeal for the Lord because motherhood, as we've heard it, is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> and, um, you know, but if we lose sight of heaven and we lose sight of God and we lose sight of the prize, um, motherhood can be extremely tedious. Um, and, and it is, but... Hello. I want to change my pants when you're dirty. And I want pants that have a pocket. You have pockets in those shorts. Oh. There should be pockets on the side. There are not. Hmm. Well, go ahead. You can find another pair of pants. <laughs> he wants po pants with pockets. <laughs> Um, but that, um, that was very encouraging to me just to think about our, um, the Holy Fathers before us, the saints that have gone before us and the suffering that they did. And so many things that I've read about being a mother is that when it's hard for me, you know, look at the saints and what they did and I can keep going. Um, when it gets hard, look at Christ on the cross. Here I have Christ crucifix behind me. Look at Christ on the cross and remember all the suffering that he did for me and me losing an hour or two of sleep is not as bad or as much as what Christ did for me. And as a mother, my goal in life is to be a picture of Christ to my children and a picture of Christ to my husband. And that's very countercultural. And I might have people that see this video and very disagree with me or they might get really mad at me. Uh, but I'm not here to please other people. I'm here to please God. And there's so much joy and so much reward and giving of your life to someone else. And that's what we're doing as mothers. We are giving our life. We're giving our life breath and our life blood to our children. And our goal should be to raise saints. Um, and also we're giving our life blood and our life breath to our husbands as well because we are supposed to love them like Christ loved us also. Um, so I hope that this encouraged you today as it encouraged me really greatly. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you.